Come on, that's all three of them dead. Okay. God damn it! Halo 2 is regarded as one of the most beloved games of all time and arguably the best in the entirety of the Halo series. It's fun to play, it's emotional, it has memorable characters, and it's home to one of the greasiest enemies in gaming. And it also has Marines, Grunts, Elites, and other allies that follow you around throughout the game and occasionally help you fight. In honor of the Lasso Deathless Run challenge set out by Moist Critical and having it finally been beaten by Gervalin, I am going to be doing something completely unrelated and instead asking the titular question, can you beat Halo 2 without losing a single Marine? So let's start off with the rules. They're pretty simple. Any allies that receive on a mission, whether they're grunts, marines, elites, jackals, or hunters, they have to survive until the end of the mission or until they despawn. This does not apply to pre-killed allies such as the corpses left in this pose around the map for decoration, and only applies to individuals that were visibly alive at one point. Furthermore, vehicles aren't people, therefore they don't have rights. And anything that doesn't turn green on the HUD also doesn't count as an ally. Lastly, I'm not required to bring any of my allies to the end of the mission with me, mainly because they tend to stop at certain points. And with that, I got started, chose Heroic as, ironically, my preferred difficulty, recited the entire opening cutscene. Were you blinded by its majesty? Blinded? Paralyzed? Dumbstruck? Performed a mating dance with master guns, grabbed two machine guns, got ready at the door, and immediately failed the challenge. Now this brings up a pretty quick danger to this challenge. If one of my allies dies during the mission, I can quickly load back to a checkpoint and try again. But if I get to a checkpoint after one was killed, I can't go back to it, meaning I have to restart the whole mission. And with renewed existential realization, that I'm going to have to essentially babysit all of my allies throughout the whole game, I slaughtered the first room's elites and moved on to save the marine on the turret in the next room. The only issue I had with walking into danger in Cairo Station was Chips. Oh no no no! No! Chips! Chips no! Who insisted on standing in front of the door twice in a row. The third time I was able to save both the Marines in the room though. I saved all three Marines in this room, which didn't take too long. And then we get to our first unavoidable ally death. Master Guns. It's shown in a video made by General Kid that there's no possible way to save Master Guns without mods of some kind, simply because he's scripted to die the moment you enter the room with or without the two elites. Is there a way to glitch skip this section to prevent him from dying? Possibly, but I have no idea what it is. So I saved the Marines in the next room, two of them are immortal anyways, killed some Halo Reach elites with the jetpack loadout, swatted some insects before they could bromp a chomp this Marine, spammed grenades next to a thermonuclear bomb, checked on the coward in the corner, and I was off to outskirts. Starting off in outskirts, I immediately stole Johnson's sniper rifle. He doesn't fucking need it, he's invincible. We assaulted the outskirts with a horde of marines who were all eager to put themselves in harm's way. The insects smelled the estrogen in the air and came to investigate. This elite was being a fucking goofball, and finally the hunters came. Now, hunters, despite what common sense would have you believe, are not hard to kill without losing any marines. Just stun them with grenades and then one-shot them with a sniper rifle. Johnson fucked off, this jackal started popping and locking, and we get to the first hard part of this challenge. As teased earlier, jackal snipers are not only a huge threat to me, but my marines as well. And there's like six of them in this one area. Furthermore, since I'm playing on Heroic, there are two Spec Ops elites, both of which have energy swords which turn my marines into tasty snacks within seconds. We eventually made it through and I made my first beam marine. Allies in Halo 2 are surprisingly accurate if you give them a precision weapon, so giving them beam rifles essentially gives you your own jackal snipers. We went to rescue the marines in this building, half of my green beam marines stayed behind, and we have another hard section. That's because the phantom enjoys pelting your marines and at least half the time it kills them. Furthermore, I tried sniping out all the enemies but leaving one grunt alive so I could make sure the phantom didn't kill any marines, and every time I did, that one grunt threw a grenade at the warthog killing two marines in the process. Okay. Grenade, get the hell out of there! I must fill up some yeah. black bags. God damn it! Fuck! 
I eventually got it, did a quick head count, and the beach part was actually pretty easy because the marines stuck back and just waited for me to do it. Not sure why, but I wasn't complaining. There's another marine in this building I need to save. Elites spawn on us, I spaghetti their brains, and we went into the tunnels. And also another warthog showed up full of marines. I have no idea where it came from, but since they were actually helping, I wasn't upset. A scarab vaporized this warthog, but since it didn't have any marine corpses I could find, it doesn't count as a death. And after one more drag race with the Covenant, we were on to Metropolis. Starting off in Metropolis, I was immediately emasculated by Johnson. Thanks for the tank. He never gets me anything. Oh, I know what the ladies like. And the first part of this mission is easy. You have a tank, all your enemies come to you, plenty of time to shoot them. Recruit this one marine on the bridge and then go back into the subway. Okay, here's the part where this becomes a sentient ship post. I immediately took one of the marine's rocket launchers and just hoped the other one wouldn't blow up the planet when using it. And fortunately, he did not. This part actually wasn't very hard, as the Marines simply wait to advance with you, giving me all the opportunity to control how fucked this situation is. Which is exactly what this next part was not. Once again, there's like four jackal snipers in this area alone, and Marines aren't competent of the meaning of stealth. Therefore, you have to very quickly snipe all the jackals, kill the two ghosts chasing this warthog, and destroy the wraith and the other four ghosts in the next area, all in a single movement. I did a quick head count of all my children, they miraculously survive, and then I was on to the two wraiths. The biggest issue here actually isn't the race, but it's the marines themselves. Yeah, the issue of my gunner hitting the other warthog was not a one-time issue, so eventually I just started doing the entire attack on my own. You shoot it faster on your own anyways, and despite the marines not being very competent gunners, they are fairly good at dodging the wraith fire. I did another head count, as at this point I was losing track of how many marines I had, and we get to the part to where this scarab destroys a tank with a marine in it. Now you may think, oh that's the second unavoidable death in Halo 2, well that's where you're wrong kiddo. All you have to do is drive a ghost through the building, or have one parked at the bottom, drive up to the tank, kick the marine out, and he's saved. The rest of this mission is easy, go on to the scarab, kill the elites, and then tell the scarab what sex is, which will cause it to die instantly. On to the first Arbiter mission. You get a whole unit of Special Ops Elites and Grunts, and my Grunts kept dying in the first room, so I decided to change the difficulty to normal, but I immediately changed my mind and set it back to heroic anyways. I'm gonna stop being a bitch. The reason being, these are Special Ops Elites and Grunts, meaning they'll cloak and wait for you to start shooting or be shot at until they uncloak and start fighting. Meaning, you can essentially stealth through the majority of this mission without risking a single ally. Secondly, Elites are no pushovers in combat, meaning this mission was is actually pretty easy. This next mission was... not so much. We had a friendly conversation with the guy we were sent here to kill, and then the food arrived. The reason the Flood are so dangerous is a single infection form can pretty much solo both my grunts. Furthermore, Flood and melee combat tend to eviscerate everything around them in seconds, so I made an executive decision that we would wait in the previous room until all the enemies had killed each other. Unfortunately, one of my elites decided to jump down anyway. Oh, he jumped down. His ass fucking jumped down, and he's dead. After one poorly made checkpoint where I had to watch my precious child get mauled by sentient kidney stones, I managed to get all of my allies into a defensible position. Using the sentinel beams to kill off the flood in this area is easily the most effective. However, these two fucking grunts wanted to stay behind and kill all the flood in the area. So we did. But even after that, I could have just left them on the turrets and they would have been considered saved. But decided to take them with me anyways, as this next section gives you more grunts if you're missing any. Next, the Commander Halfjaw shows up out of nowhere because the game expects you to have at least lost one squad member, and they drop him from the same Phantom. Since I didn't lose anybody, he kinda just appears out of nowhere. I then babysat all of them to make sure they make it back to the Phantom, tore up the station's carpets, killed the milk drinker, and I was back to playing as the Chief. A drop pod assault on the Covenant. Only three ODST Marines survived the drop, but they're surprisingly easy to save. Just nuke the turrets with the rockets you have, do the same to the Phantoms, don't get head cased by the Carbine Elites, and then you get a new car. Look at that new car. I wish I could fuck that guy's ass. Since there's only three seats and a Warthog and there's now four of us, one guy has to follow behind and walk. Fortunately, there are plenty of Jackals over there, and I made all three of them into clean, mean, green beam Marines. I proceeded to snipe all the elites at the forward building, the Kaisar gave me a tank, and I did the same thing I did on Metropolis. We sailed into the heart of Covenant defenses, blasting anything before it could even touch us. They gave me another marine and we proceeded on foot. 
This first section was somewhat annoying as the jackals kept pelting my marines to death, surprisingly more so than the grunts and even the elites. Making it through, we got to the final hurdle, the waterfall section. Now this surprisingly wasn't hard at all actually, as all the marines have snipers. We all just stood back and cleared out the entire section before advancing to the next mission. Regret. Now, Regret is a hard mission simply because of the sheer amount of jackal snipers that are allowed to exist, but it's mitigated by the fact that I have only two marines I have to look out for this time. AKA, just zip through sniping all the jackal snipers before they snipe us, and, and treat yourself with a little bit of beam marine. Me and my beam marines then proceeded to beam the hunters with our beam rifles. We then took over the butt and set sail for the next island. We proceeded to beam the immediate defenders as we invaded the building. I threw a grenade inside the elevator while people were still inside it, and then we soared through the ocean. We pillaged the forward defenders, and then we get back to the part where jackal snipers exist. This part's particularly difficult because we have two different wildcard enemies to deal with. The first being the hunters, the second being the drones. Now you can kill one of those two groups quickly, but this makes your marines vulnerable to the other. Also, jackal snipers are still a thing. Oh shit. Okay, there. About five honor guard assaults later, and we are on the boat to the Prophet's place. Inside, we have to deal with about an endless swarm of guards while both attacking the Prophet and keeping our Marines alive. Now, the Prophet himself is really easy to kill, but not so much when we're also trying to save our Marines. I expertly blade parried the elites, threw my ass back so hard I clipped out of reality, decided to give one of my marines a rocket launcher despite everything we've been through, and after about 20 continuous minutes of blade parrying elites, I killed the prophet of regret, almost had a pants shit moment. Hang on. Okay, they're both still alive! No! Okay. Oh my- Okay, I got him! The Covenant pulled a girl it's you that I lie with, and we were on to the next mission. Back to the Arbiter. We were now over halfway through the challenge, and I only had one unavoidable death on my belt. I set this mission's difficulty to easy, you'll see why in a minute, ignore this grunt next to the pillar, he stays in the vent anyway so he's safe, and we start journeying through, saving the scattered Covenant forces. Four Covenant units spawn in these starting areas, five if you count the crying gun in the beginning. Up to half of these allies have a chance of being jackals, the other half being major grunts. Fun fact, this is also the only time in the entire Halo series where a jackal is on your side. Anyways, just go through and spot the robots, and then we get to the part to where shit hits the fan. So, why is this part so bad? Well, I'm glad you asked. We're on a stationary platform and there's a giant robot shooting fucking grenades at us. And on top of that, there's a horde of flood and sentinels waiting to pulverize my babies before I even have a chance to reload. I reloaded this section so many times that eventually I just gave up, restarted the whole mission, got two jackals this time, and came with a sentinel beam instead. Was this part now easy by any means? Absolutely not. But it was still doable now with the ability to quickly kill off both the Flood and Sentinels. They all survived till the end of the skiff ride and they stopped following you here, so I considered it a job well done. Also, since the Flood dropped human guns, you can give them human weapons. They look kind of goofy holding them. Now this next section, several marines die and there's no way to save them. However, since we are playing as the Arbiter and this is still part of the Covenant's missions, these marines are actually hostile to you anyways, as proven with the Red HUD. Therefore, I have no obligation to save them. I fought through the flood infested halls, I vented, and then we get to the real reason I set this difficulty to easy. Four elites spawn in this section, but one elite spawns in the very back of the flood lines with his shields completely shattered, who is essentially meant to die to the flood. There is no way to get him to regenerate his shields, and anything that hits him other than a single straight bullet will kill him instantly. However, he can still be saved, as the end of the mission is literally right through the cave. Just survive the flood onslaught, puppy guard the one in four elites with shield rectile dysfunction, and then we move on to quarantine zone. I set the difficulty back up to Heroic, Halfjaw fucks off, and we're back down to four elites. We get some extra vehicles and I pilot the Spectre. Now any person with a pulse would declare this mission as extremely hard, as there's no way I can accurately babysit the fourth elite and the ghost who has to follow behind us. Fortunately, I do not have a pulse, and therefore instead have a solution. On the other side of the first building we enter, there is a tank that a flood is meant to pilot. We simply run him over, take the tank for ourselves, and do the same thing I've done twice in a row now. Blasting through the flood and sentinel defenses effortlessly. Even the part with the Wraith is no match for the Scorpion tank. We eventually get to the part to where I have to get out of the tank, and I'm once again faced with the conundrum of whether or not to just let my elite stay behind. Decided against it, as I've pretty much been taking my allies with me this whole time, and I was pretty confident we could make it to the end without too much hassle. Me was right. We get to the section where there's another tank. Guys, get the fuck in the vehicle. 
Half John, one of his own lackeys, shows up, and we were able to shell the flood before they even get close to us, and we made our way onto the skiff to prepare for the worst part of this mission. This one guy in the back didn't want to come with us for some reason, but it doesn't matter because all the elites despawn in this part and are replaced with four new elites anyways. And then begun the Flood Hell Run. It's not that fighting the Flood is hard, it's fighting the Flood and making sure all of your elites survive before you get to a checkpoint. Which I fucked up. And you guessed it, I had to replay the whole mission over again. So I set the difficulty to normal, replayed the whole mission and got back to the skiff ride, and we were doing well against the Flood until I fucked up. Again. Yeah, I had to replay this entire mission twice. This time I gave myself the infinite ammo skull as I wasn't going to do this shit a fourth time. Alright, really quickly. Spectre. Tank. Elites. Abandoned. But this time I grabbed a rocket launcher. I pretty much spam shot at the first flood wave and then something miraculous happened. All the elites stayed put. They took a defensive position at the top and I was able to waste all the flood waves. I stopped using a rocket launcher halfway through because it felt too cheesy. Made it to the end. Emasculated Johnson for earlier. <laughs> How you doing? And then Gorilla Grodd betrayed me. We were then kicked down into the Flood Hive where we had a meeting with the Big Cheese himself. Kill me or release me, Parasite. But do not waste my time with cock. There is much cock. I set the difficulty back to Heroic, the Gravemind Teleport's Master Chief, now me again, to a gun-free zone. There's no allies in the first part of this mission, so I just played through normally. Cortana's Wasteline, and we make it to the holding cells where five marines who have not yet been collected are waiting. I quickly traded most of the marines' weapons for carbines as there were no beams in the town. Set the second batch of marines free, and we were back up to the upper levels. Carbine marines are plenty effective, especially when it comes to facing brutes, as you really need to only hit a brute twice in the head to KO him. I team rifled these two hunters before they even got close to my children. We camped upon the balcony and pelted all the Covenant who are now killing each other over brutes and elites and religion or something. I then found some more beam rifles and I was able to make a whole five-man unit of beam marines. Did I really need to give all of my marines beam rifles? Probably not, but to call it effective would be an understatement. We hid like cowards while we waited for both sides to weaken each other, then crushed the resistance before the resistance knew they were resisting us. And then this next room. This fucking next room, oh my god. So every unit in this room is either a special ops grunt or a special ops elite, which means they have about an 80% chance of throwing a plasma grenade, and a 90% chance that that plasma grenade blows up one or more of my marines. I did this part so many fucking times, even to the parts where I started screaming at my marines because they kept randomly running forward. Hi, man. This ain't good. No! No! I did eventually make it with all five of the marines saved, but needless to say, this was without a doubt the hardest part of the challenge so far. An absolute nightmare to go through that I wish upon no mortal soul. I almost blew up at one of my marines about sniper rifles. Well, sniper rifle. We sat out one of the most cinematic battles in Halo, mopped up the survivors, and finally we were done with Gravemind. I set the difficulty back down to normal, then noticed something strange. This first elite corpse in the first section of Uprising isn't like the other corpses we haven't counted. However, when I restarted this mission, this elite very clearly spawns as being already dead. This was especially confusing as the elites in a pile next to him are laying like the other bodies not counted earlier. I really wasn't sure whether or not to count this, but since you can see that he was never alive to begin with, even when you restart the mission, I decided not to count it. Moving on, we pillage the monkey boys for betraying us, this elite comes out to casually explain what's happening, and then we get three more elites, one of them being a zealot. The elites walk with us into the next room, into what we are actually going to have to protect, which are the two grunt miners. Now oh, I was actually coming out here to pick up a cupcake! Now this first room is pretty easy to save everyone in, you just get the drop on the brutes before they can brute shot your grunts, and you're fine. Everybody makes it into the next room, we shell the shit out of the brutes in the next room, and make it through because the elites actually pull their weight. And then we get to the part that makes this hard. There are several levels below that you have to repeatedly jump down, each contains a different level of brute or jackal resistance. Now your allies are just going to chill on the top level, but they'll teleport to you later on. And I originally made it through here with the assumption that all of my allies survived, however when I got to the teleport part, I noticed that the two grunts were missing. So I reloaded and sure as shit I made this discovery. What? They can't survive the fall! That's right, grunt miners are too weak to even survive a basic fall. Fortunately though, this part is still possible. You simply need to kill all the brutes in the area before they shell the grunts, or the grunts try to jump or throw a grenade. 
This time, I double checked to make sure they were still alive by pushing a box onto the ceiling part and looking over with a carbine, and sure as shit, they all made it. I shoved my rod down the throats of the brutes waiting at the entrance, and this next part's a fucking doozy. Yeah, the brutes are a pain, yeah, there's also jackal snipers too, but the worst part is at this point you have so many elites you start to lose track. You have five elites now, and by the next section you have four grunts, though this one gets on a turret so it doesn't really matter, and half of them are in vehicles and all of them don't know how to drive without running their own side over. So you just keep reloading the checkpoint if you can't find someone for some reason, and eventually some of them just stop following you. More on that later. Since only a few of your allies have ghosts, most of them don't actually end up following you through the rest of this passage immediately, meaning you have to very quickly kill the defenders in the next sections, as none of your allies have any sense of self-preservation either, aka they're going to immediately drive their ghosts into combat and get swamped. They also give you no time to prepare as they all immediately pedal to the metal their ghosts into the next section. We make it to the section where there's a bunch of brutes waiting and I quickly snipe them with a carbine. And the part with the race, which was actually surprisingly easy, given none of your elites get hit by the race. Just hijack the first wraith for yourself and use it to destroy pretty much all the brute resistance. And as we prepared to enter the building to make the final push for this mission, we saw in the distance our allies were actually following us. They just wanted to walk for some reason. And then even more elites spawned, I think at this point I had like 7 or 8, and we completely demolished the forward defenses. Finally we were at the end of the mission. I checked several times to make sure I had all the elites, as some were still making their way to us, and then my heart sank. Where were my two grunt miners? So I took that wraith to the side of the waterfall, used it to climb up, as I desperately searched for my grunts, and then I found them alive and safe. They were playing in this pool. I guess they can't go any further, cause falling off the waterfall will kill them. So I made it through the last door, ended the mission, and I was on to High Charity. High Charity doesn't have any allies, so I just played through it normally. And on to the final mission, The Great Journey. I enabled infinite ammo, and I set the difficulty to easy. Anybody who's played through Halo 2 probably knows where this is going. The majority of this mission is super easy to do without losing allies, so let's just zip through it. We protect Halfjaw and his lackey as we make it to the caves. This Needler Elite gives us two hunters. We proceed to pillage the brute defenses, which is easy to do without losing allies because they're fucking hunters. We free the elites and hunters the brutes have locked up. We free, we free the marines from the brutes grasp as well. I make another B marine who's now on the same side as us because ring about to go boom boom. Johnson steals my scarab and we make our way inside the building where we confront Tartarus. Tartarus, the prophets have betrayed us. So uh yeah, Tartarus, um... So Tartarus has a weapon that can kill you in one hit, and you have a bunch of elites that spawn with energy swords who immediately jump down and start trying to stab him. And yeah, that's what we're dealing with. So in all seriousness, my original perception of this was that it wasn't going to be possible to do this solo, but since I didn't have anyone who has MCC online at the moment, I was just under the assumption that I was fucked and that after all this, I had failed the challenge. I tried for at least an hour straight. Here's some of the strategies I figured out. One, if you're playing on the easiest difficulty, you can kill Tartarus as early as the second time his shield breaks. Two, you can scare away your own elites for a few seconds with a plasma grenade. Still, even with this knowledge, I was losing an upwards of five to six elites by the time Tartarus died, which is why I elected to use a third strategy. In Halo 2, there's a glitch to bring a Banshee into the final room. Simply fly it down here after the cutscene, turn around, and it's right there. The Banshee was able to do a shit ton of damage to Tartarus and consistently kill him on the second shield charge. Furthermore, like grenades, you can use the Banshee to scare away your own elites, and after a few more tries, I managed to kill Tartarus where only three elites died. So now I smell blood in the water, and I even had one more idea, to jet ram Tartarus away from the elites, and holy shit it fucking worked. I rammed him down to the bottom. Six straight to the bottom, Joe Tunnel. Yeah. To the side, then I rammed him off the map. He teleported back to the top, he jumped down to the middle, I killed him with a banshee bomb, and I beat Tartarus without a single elite dying. And then it was over. The cutscene played and I beat the entirety of Halo while protecting all the allies I was given the chance to with my life. So to answer the question, can you beat Halo 2 without a single ally dying? Almost. Master Gun still dies and I've yet to see a way that can save him with that doesn't involve mods. He's 100% green on the HUD and if he's moved away from the elites he is a factor in combat. Some people might make the argument that since he's immortal otherwise that he shouldn't count. But to be fair, I think the fact that almost the entire game can be beaten while only losing a single ally is victory enough. 
Also, according to YouTube statistics, only about half of you currently have beam. Right? 